Hello and welcome to Gemini Decans. This is a short summary video uh, of what we have been discussing uh, as part of the Decan Diaries course in New Angel Tarot Academy over the last three weeks. Um, as always, I like to caption uh, this trinity or triplicity of cards uh, before we progress into giving you a summary of what we uh, have learned and things that we can take away with us to further our knowledge on tarot and our readings for others. It is our choices and how we respond to life that determine our own awakening. First of all, I like to lay out all of the cards uh, indicating the planetary energy, the zodiacal energy, and then the decan of the card. So the first card, we have Jupiter in Gemini, we have Mars in Gemini, and then lastly, we'll be talking about Sun in Gemini. Um, but before we get started, let's talk about Jupiter. And Jupiter as a planet is obviously uh, ruling, ruling Sagittarius, which is actually the opposite sign uh, to Gemini. So essentially, Jupiter is in detriment. It is not operating as it normally would. And that is uh, the planet of expansion, good luck, good fortune, um, and a revelation, perhaps karmic. Uh, many people refer to the Wheel of Fortune as a, car, a card of karma, fate. Um, so I think generally, um, you know, the, the Golden Dawn also refer to this as the shortened card of shortened choice, as uh, shortened force. And when we look at the character in this card, we obviously see a person standing surrounded by swords uh, with a blindfold on, bound, restricted. Um, so it's, it's not a great feeling. It's not a, an energy of, um, you know, uh, being able to to think freely or even to um, be able to see freely. Uh, this person is trapped within their own mind, trapped um, physically, as well as, it's interesting, there is, a, there is a castle in the background here. So they are far removed, you know, it almost seems like they are far from home. They are not feeling at home at all right now. Perhaps they are uh, a prisoner. Perhaps they have escaped. But what have they escaped from and who are they imprisoned by? Um, but essentially, the card itself is, um, you know, essentially analysis paralysis. Us not being able to make uh, clear headway into what we're thinking about, um, the position that we're in. And, you know, eights for me are about movement. And in this case, it obviously is the antithesis of that. There is no movement in this card. As you know, Gemini energy is, is sword energy and sword energy is air, the mind, uh, anything cerebral, anything to do with communication. Uh, and in this card in particular, you can see the water on the ground. It's sort of dissipating or drying up. So there's really a bit of an emotional drought uh, happening here. There isn't a lot um, of emotional content. It's it's all mental. Um and, if, and the fact that this person as well is slightly different um, to the other characters in the card. This person seems to have longer hair. Uh, they're wearing a different um, outfit. They're wearing orange. Um, whereas when we move into the Nine of Swords, this person is wearing white. And it appears to be a male figure, not a female figure. So, you know, there could be also an adage of, you know, is the first person in the card Eve? Is the next person Adam and in the third position who knows um, but essentially the, the tarot is always open to interpretation but I am going to mention a few key mythological uh, mythological references as well um, so the eight of swords is essentially analysis paralysis um, it is the card of the lovers so you'll notice the first row or the first column of, of used lovers 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 all the way down but then the second column or the third column represents the decanic rulership. But because it's the first and second decan of uh, Gemini, we've got the lovers here repeated twice. Looking at Mars in Gemini, the nine of swords, um, this is when it gets interesting because obviously the storyline of the lovers is, the, is essentially the story of Adam and Eve, but it's also our conscious mind and our subconscious mind, masculine and feminine, uh, working with our higher self. 
And in the Mars energy, the Mars is represented by the Tower um, and this Nine of Swords character in the card, in the minor uh, arcana card, is losing sleep. This person is no longer, you know, has a, has a blindfold on. However, they're, they're not able to rest. They are in a state of unrest. They are in a state of worry, concern, guilt, re maybe regret. Um, lots of different um, interpretations of this. But Mars energy in the tower is really... Um, you know, a fall from grace. It is an, is an understanding of um, no longer are we frolicking in the Garden of Eden. We are falling uh, into the material world, reality. And the reality is that whatever this person is experiencing, they're not enjoying uh, the thought process. The secondary decan is justice, which is ruled by Libra. So Libra is cardinal air, and it is the secondary decan of this card or rulership. So we are seeking justice in this situation. Perhaps it is a legal issue. Perhaps it is uh, something that society deems uh, punishable. And when we look at the imagery as well on the on the uh, wooden box or the in, uh, you know carving the wood carving on the bed in which this person is sleeping on, you can if you look closely there is two images and they're fighting. There's a conflict happening. Now, as we know, tarot can be aligned to many different stories, whether they be biblical or uh, in relation to plays that uh, Pamela Coleman Smith was associated with. She was a stage, uh, a theatre uh, stage designer and an illustrator. She obviously illustrated the deck, but there also has been reference to certain um, scenes out of certain plays connected to the Minor Arcana as well. But I'll get to that probably more in the Ten of Swords. But in the Nine of Swords, there is a biblical reference that's been um, documented in many different places, and that is the story of Cain and Abel. And Gemini is the sign of the twins. And there are many twins in mythology. We've got Castor and Pollux and Romulus and Remus, and then we have Cain and Abel. Um, but Cain and Abel in the Bible were the first two born sons uh, of Adam and Eve, and Adam and Eve are featured on the lover's card. Now, they presented gifts to God as the story goes, and God um, favoured Abel over Cain. Cain was very jealous, and in uh, you'll notice in the Ten of Swords there is a a death that's been taken place, but I'll talk about that as well when we get to ten. But I, you could, you could sort of look at this person uh, not sleeping, and it is a card of maybe guilt or bullying or, you know, victimization. And you know, it is interesting because the person in the card as well is being comforted. Um, you know, God did uh, let Cain have his life; he didn't um, end his life at that time, but made him. Uh, walk the earth he became a wanderer but gave him the mark of Cain uh, in order to atone for his uh, his sin however in this instance um, you know the swords as well are in a horizontal position which indicates neither up nor down he is in a state of purgatory uh, mental purgatory um, so there's no movement here either, um, but they are interlaced. You'll also notice the handles are kind of interlaced with one another, a little bit like a ladder. And we'll talk about that as well in the Ten of Swords. But um, yeah, Mars is is a planet of conflict. It's a planet of friction. It's a planet of, um, you know, uh, resistance. Um, it's not the path of least resistance. It is the path of um, hard lessons and lessons that are indicated by the color black, Black in any of the tarot always indicates uh, a reference to Saturn, Saturnian energy. And Saturnian energy is the hard lessons. You know, this, this guy's learning the hard way. The third row is the sun in Gemini. We have the card of the sun, which is Leo energy. And Leo is in fall when it is opposite Aquarius. And therefore, once again, these uh, detrimental sort of placements are opposite with the detrimental effect being the Ten of Swords uh, is not looking like a happy card. However, there is a, a moral to the story. Um, Arthur Edward Waite and Pamela Coleman-Smith were both members of the Golden Dawn. And you'll notice that obviously there is, despite the 
darkness of the, the night sky or the, the night sky, the sun is rising. Okay, the darkest hour, as they say, is always before the dawn. Maybe that's a direct reference with the golden dawn, maybe not. But the identity here, it is almost like an identity crisis as well, because the sun always uh, connects us to our life force, our kundalini, our ability to be free, independent, unique. It is at the center of the universe, but it also provides illumination and an illumination that is uh, punishable by death, perhaps not literal death. I mean, once again, these cards uh, have been akin to stories and the Ten of Swords has also been connected to stories like uh, the death of uh, Thomas Becket, who was the Archbishop of Canterbury in the 12th century. Um, but again, that's also one of the stories that was told um, because Pamela Coleman Smith worked in theatre and it was a, you know, a reference to a play. But from my perspective, and most people who would look at tarot as a, a divination tool or a tool of self-development and um, you know transformation, this is an awakening. This is a spiritual awakening. As above, so below. As above us shines the, the sun. As below is what's happening on the ground. What is happening on the ground? We see the star. We see the uh, third decan is the star and the third decan is the the sign of Aquarius and the star is represented by this in the, the sign of the humanitarian so as the sun shines what happens on the earth uh, is a is a not only uh, a consideration that we need to have for others the global village the Aquarian is the sign of the humanitarian but again circling back the fact that this is a, a Gemini card um, it is about choice and the choice to be cruel or the choice to be kind. And sometimes we make the wrong decision and sometimes we have to learn the hard way. But in the end, the star also represents hope, um, a new beginning, a chance for us to be led towards the light and to follow the star, also known as the Star of Bethlehem. Um, and as someone, one of my students actually mentioned that this is also for them uh, resonated a, a sign of a loss of innocence, which is um, very powerful. I thought that was fantastic. But in the end, um, this is a card of, or well, this row is a card of about uh, illumination um, because the sun is a luminary and the stars are luminaries as well. They shine light onto situations that are very very dark and the lovers card in the center again is that polarity between masculine and feminine um, and divine uh, intervention the angel above has been known as I've said before it depends on who you're talking to and what uh, you know doctrine you wish to uh, apply it to can be seen as the uh, archangel Raziel or the archangel of Raphael which is the angel of the east which is the angel that rules the sign of Gemini and the element of air. However, it again depends on who you're talking to. So as we move forward, we're going to also discuss the Minor Arcana sword cards on the Tree of Life in relation to the Golden Dawn and Kabbalah. So all Minor Arcana cards follow uh, this pattern on the left, which it doesn't matter which suit it is, it's always in the same order. Aces are at the top, twos to the left, threes to the right, and we zigzag our way down until we hit Malkuth, which is the number 10 at the base of the tree. Um, again, this is a reality. This is Earth. This is Malkuth, the kingdom, uh, the plane of existence uh, which we live in. We do not live uh, in the angelic realm. We live in Malkuth. The nine cards in the center I've also listed from left to right. The planetary card, Jupiter in Gemini, Mars in Gemini, Sun in Gemini. So from left to right once again. Uh, and the decanic card is uh, eight, nine and ten of swords. And then on the far right, I've given a reference to how the court cards are normally placed within this suit on the Tree of Life. 
All uh, aces are always in Keta. Uh, kings are positioned in the Rider Waite on number two, Jokma or Hokma, which is wisdom. And threes are always positioned, uh, well, queens are always positioned on number three, which is Bina, uh, patience and understanding or emotional counsel, a counsel of logic in this instance. The sixth position is Tiferet, which is where the knights will always be positioned in uh, the Toth decks. It's usually the pages uh, or the princes, I beg your pardon. And then in the foundation, all the root card is always the pages. Um, pages are messengers and students. And as we are in this earth plane, we are students of the world. We are students of the uh, framework of the universe. And the framework of the universe is the tree of life and the Kabbalah. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I would love to hear anything that you want to ask. Uh, get the discussion going. If you are watching this video on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. If you are watching this as part of the uh, Masterclass Community uh, DCAN uh, website, leave your comments as well and we'll have a private discussion uh, as part of the student community. If you'd like to have a look at New Angel Tarot Academy, all the links are in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time, thanks for watching.